I watch and review one Detective Conan movie a week until the release of the brand new film in April 2024. I'll tell you what the movie is about, the good, the bad, and anything else interesting of note. And at the end of each video, I rank the movies watched in the tier list to see exactly which films are the best in the series. And today we brave the cold winter in movie 15, Detective Conan Quarter of Silence. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Quarter of Silence premiered in Japanese theaters on April 16, 2011, with Yasuichiro Yamamoto serving as chief director, Kobun Shizuno as director, and written once again by Kazunari Kochi. The film follows Conan and the gang on a trip to the snowy mountains of Kitanosawa to investigate the town's connection to a subway bombing. While there, Conan starts unraveling an eight-year-old mystery while being hunted by a shadowy figure. Conan now has to figure out the identity of the culprit before before the town succumbs to their acts of terrorism. I really like this movie and actually found myself liking it even more on subsequent watch throughs. Firstly, the action. This movie has single-handedly stepped up the game for action scenes in Detective Conan. Watching that subway scene in the beginning absolutely floored me. Fast, energetic, thrilling, over the top. You know this opening scene could absolutely have been the finale to any other Conan film? And the movie starts with this, which admittedly made me a little worried that they just set the bar too high. I was worried that they blew the whole budget on this opening act, that the whole movie was simply going to be a snooze fest. But that that's where I was wrong. Not only does the movie deliver on a really good mystery in a beautiful location with really good side characters, it somehow delivers a final action scene with as much hype and energy as its first. So we know that the action in this movie is plentiful and amazing. But what about the rest of the movie that isn't blowing stuff up? I'm glad to report that it's really good as well. What I really like is that from the get-go, this mystery sets a tone, with the prologue showing a scared child being chased through a winter night. The mise en scene? Am I supposed to be saying it like that? Uh, anyway, it's it, the word sounds like it should be said like that. The mise en scene of the scene. <laughs> I can't get through it. Of oh, this scene was excellent and watching it made me actually feel terrified for this character I've never met. As for the mystery itself, it all essentially revolves around one singular incident eight years ago. What I really like about this is that throughout the film, we slowly expand on this one singular incident, revealing more about the people involved, incidents happening concurrently, characters' different perspectives on the incident, the ramifications that haunt the side characters till this day. It really helped build familiarity with the setting as we didn't hop from one location to the next like in the other films. Instead, we're always grounded with this one mystery in this one singular location. As for the side characters, most of them were pretty standard but this one kid who's been in an 8 year long coma since the incident is the standout. Not only because he's serving essentially the same role as Ran was in movie 4, being the person who lost their memory and by coincidence losing the identity of the culprit as well, he is also just a really sympathetic character who you really feel sorry for. This kid is a 7 year old in a 15 year old body. That scene where he breaks down realizing that all his friends who grew up are strangers to him or realizing that his dog had passed away while he was asleep. It was heartbreaking and I genuinely found myself getting teary eyed watching that scene. Which is a testament to the film as I've been told repeatedly that I have no soul and I barely cry at anything. Seriously though, I barely cry at anything. I do have to say we have one really cringe moment that ruins this otherwise stellar movie. It's a scene where Conan lectures the detective boys about the importance of friendship or whatever. It comes out of nowhere. It makes Conan sounds like he's this bastard bitch. Yeah, I don't know. It just came out of nowhere. It was really cringe and I wish it wasn't there. Fun fact. The 15 minute window of survival that is reiterated constantly in the movie is in fact true. According to research, the period of 0 to 15 minutes yields the most optimal survival rate of about 80% in the event of an avalanche. However, past the 15 minute mark, the survival rate dramatically drops to 40% and then 10% by the 35 minute mark. This was one of the better movies of the series for sure. Explosive action, great setting, great tone, solid mystery, although I wish more of the side characters were more interesting, but nevertheless, really solid film and I'm very comfortable with crowning it the king of A tier. See y'all next week for movie 16, Detective Conan, The 11th Striker. See y'all then. Bye bye.